that's something to consider. And uh, plus, it's interesting that they begin their calendar just uh, within like uh, maybe 70 years after the end of this one of these small events. Yeah. Uh, you see a beryllium 10 spike right around 5,300 years ago. Uh, so they had. So it's almost like they were marking the uh, the phenomenon. Yes. That way. And be- sort of pass it down. And of course, in their culture, they talk about the galactic center. That's they have a lot of cultural uh, ritual tied in with the galactic center. Uh, do you if the, do you know if that's what they call the Chibalba? Is that the what they call the galactic center? Uh, well, like, uh, I'd have to look at what I've written in the book there. Uh, how did you pronounce that? Uh, Shibalba, I think it's called. It's spelled with an X, but I might be mistaken yeah. uh, that for the, the, the kingdom of, of uh, death and rebirth. Well, they, I think. they speak, uh, I, I don't know the exact uh, word offhand, uh, but they speak of the mother creator. So in their cosmology, the center of the galaxy is the creator, and they've got it right. I mean, they're closer to the truth than our current astronomers are. That's amazing. I mean, we, we, basically, everything flips. What is myth is basically uh, scientific <laughs> <laughs> uh, explanations that are misinterpreted by us because we can't understand what they were really telling us. Yeah. Whereas yeah. our sci- taught scientific theories that we pay our good money to send our kids to the universities to, and they're, what they're teaching is really myth. I mean, the idea of the Big Bang. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And it's, building super colliders that are sort of questionable what we're going to learn from. Well, that's true. I mean, and that's a good point. It's, it's, uh, I think it's the most expensive science project in human history, actually, and it seems to just uh, collapse every time they fire it up as well. So, <laughs> so. Uh, Even worse was the one in the U.S. They spent $2 billion to, for the superconducting super collider, and then they shut it down after they dug the tunnel. Oh, yeah. And now there's rumors that they're making it into some sort of fallout shelter. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a sad story in itself. Uh, Paul, if if we look ahead and uh, talk a little bit about some of the things that you're currently involved in, obviously I, I highly recommend people, them, we only scrape the surface here in terms of Earth Under Fire. There's so much more to to talk about and to discover that is that is in the book, of course, but uh, you you are doing some work on sub quantum kinetics right now. You're doing some uh, ice core investigation as well, and you're keeping up with the Starburst Foundation as well. Three different points. Uh, anything there you'd like to to talk a little bit about? Well, uh, sub quantum kinetics. I first started developing the theory uh, oh in the seventies, uh, and the book has been through two dish two editions now. I'm updating it and the third edition will be out shortly um, and it's made up to 11 predictions that have been verified so far and these are predictions that were published and we're saying things different than conventional physics was talking about and later evidence came out that showed it was correct so whereas I was more or less tentative in the beginning I thought it it, it was very you know a very interesting theory and uh, um, explained uh, quite a number of things in a good way. Now seeing its track record, which is uh, better than any theory I know of, uh, huh. uh, I've come to believe this is it. I mean, this is what will be taught in the schools a hundred years from now, or hopefully sooner than that. And um, what the new development that's happened, I'm very excited about um, in the last few months, uh, had someone helping me, uh, who is doing computer simulations of the equations. And we're now generating particles that materialize in the ether. By the way, it's an ether theory. It's totally different from the ether theories that were uh, proposed 100 years ago. Um, and it's it's able to, it, it totally changes the way you, you envision the Earth and the world. Um, it, basically, when you've studied subquantum kinetics, you look at reality actually in a different way, almost yeah. like as if you went to the movie Matrix, you know, that's, that's <laughs> imagining right. that the Matrix is not real. <laughs> you know. And and so, is is there an easy way to? I guess I mean a lot of our listeners will be familiar. We've talked about quantum mechanics many times on on the program, and 
and the the, the thing that people are generally aware of I'd, I'd reckon is uh, the the idea that uh, our consciousness and our awareness are are participatory in in the fact of basically putting reality together in terms of what you're working on now with uh, with this new theory of subquantum kinetics is there anything specifically there that differs from that does it upgrade that does it verify or disqualify that in any way well in the area of consciousness uh, for example with subquantum kinetics it, it it's allowed to have particles materialize or be dematerialized so uh, some things that we would call magic that we assume the magicians is doing some tricks could be that he's actually uh, uh, has mastered the ability to materialize or dematerialize matter. Uh, and with subquantum kinetics, we understand how that happens. And uh, so we have a model. Uh, also, psychokinesis. So, uh, subquantum kinetics uh, presents a totally new way of understanding what force is. And you realize that, well, physics doesn't explain what force is. They just say that you push on something and it moves according to certain equations. <laughs> but they don't give a real explanation of what's going on. And you find, well, subquantum kinetics is more like understanding your body, like uh, just the, it's like the idea of the way the chemical reactions and diffusion processes going on in your body create the membranes of yourself and mm. uh, structures there. Uh, we're dealing with similar approach that's explaining how particles are formed. Um, so we, we are indeed participatory in that. And do you think that our um, our revelation of this, our, our, our knowing of, of these facts, is something that also might alter then our, our attitude towards these concepts? Obviously it will, it will but it, it, to me it's like uh, if we've been ignorant of these things in the past... Maybe that's why they haven't um, worked. Well, Everyone it, can't it also <laughs> alters our our concept of what's possible. Exactly. For example, if you picture that we're sort of like inside a bird cage, and that bird cage, the bars are fabricated by those university professors that are there insisting. Uh, I, I, I come up with the idea of the wall from Pink Floyd. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that you must uh, believe, you know, that energy is conserved. Uh, you know, you cannot create energy out of not, nowhere. Well, by by making us believe that, they are condemning us to more years of burning oil and kind of stuff that's happening in the Gulf of Mexico. That's right. Uh, because there are people who have made devices, and I've seen one one or two work myself, in my own eyes, um, that generate energy out of nothing. Uh, and uh, in fact, when you realize that most of the universe, the universe is creating energy continuously. So actually, it's the physicists that are wrong. Um, Subquantum kinetics also leads to uh, new ideas about space propulsion. Um, it, it you you come to understand that simply by charging a capacitor that that where one plate is bigger than the other and pulsing it at high frequency DC, you can get thrusts that are thousands of times greater than what a jet engine can do. Okay. And Townsend Brown did this. Now, well, the nice thing about subquantum kinetics is it explains how this happens, and it's due to a flawed understanding of of fields. You know, fields aren't necessarily attached to charges, like physicists tell you. They are in the ether, and the charges produce the fields that are anchored in the ether, and those fields can then act on those charges and move them. And there's, they, they, they have no legal, there's no legal agreement between the charge and the field that it has to stay put. <laughs> right. The charges can get pushed along by the field, and it's sort of like, the idea of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, and sometimes it's <laughs> joked that that's something that's impossible. Well, it's not impossible. There are devices you can build that do that. <laughs> and we could go to Mars in five days with devices, these kinds of thrusters, powered on a, a bank of solar cells. You know, but it's not done. You know, all that is done in black projects. Yeah, exactly. That's that's really interesting. And, and, and we're still stuck here on the ground, and it's almost like... Uh, so what you're saying in one way is that if we can take ourselves out of that box that 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 
so-called uh, modern science have, have set up for 